the forge has gone quiet, the bellows blow no more. The forge has gone quiet, the smiths have gone home. Only fading embers remain, and my hearth grows cold. One kiss from you to rekindle it all. It's episode 58 in the beginning of Act 6. Whoa. Act 6 of dun, 8. Dun, dun, dun. Only 58 episodes in. 6 of 8. Yeah. 6 of 8. Isn't that like a Star Trek character? There's a 7 of 8. 7 of 9. 7 right? of 9. Yeah. 58 that's, episodes? That's a Orders yeah. of the Wayne Giant. No, no, no. She's 7 out of 9. Oh, I see. Yeah. I thought she was 7 ninths of a Borg. If six words. Seven of nine. nine. Six I, I haven't really watched too much of the Star Trek stuff, but. No, it's seven of nine. I, yeah, it's seven. Because there's nine of them, and she's in seven. Nerds, uh, may I say? Wait, yes. is that why they call it Deep Space Nine? <laughs> no. But. Prosper and I haven't watched the movies. And everyone was afraid of her because she ate. Okay. Wait. Um, so, so we're in cool. Act Six, and, and I think it would be good maybe for us to. Mm-hmm. Kind of walk through the story. One, so because Jason, obviously, you coming in later, you're not going to know a lot of what happened before, and that's okay. You're not required to. You're coming in. What matters is where you're at now. But oh, yeah. I think it may be good for us to kind of revisit like where we started in in the the very very beginning <laughs> and how we got here. The broad strokes, of course. <laughs> You've seen Here's come an from episode a- eleven, starting till now. That's yeah. great. Yeah. We came from a town called Hugh. That's right. <laughs> oh, oh, no. So, Don't let him start. <laughs> so let's let's talk about what brought you to Durendal initially. Like, so if we were talking like literally episode one. Aliens. Aliens. <laughs> well, we were we were uh, part of the uh, 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 Dufresne Agency. Spoiler. I mean, what? No. What? Spoilers, secrets. Uh, Ruined it for Eugene. We're really bad at keeping that secret, by the way. <laughs> no, it's, it's not a secret. secret. It's not a secret. No. Um, anyways, we're part of the different agency, and we were given a uh, mission to come and help out. Uh, Amadeus, Amadeus. Yeah, uh, rock me, Amadeus. Amadeus um, Chandler. On conundrum. And uh, we met yeah. up with him. What, what, what happened on pin number three years ago? Penumbrum. Penumbrum. Uh, the last cataclysm. That's right. The comet. Yeah. Which is and where. Assassination which, That's right. Yeah, which we found is not the last is in final, but the last is in previous. <laughs> so what happened in the last cataclysm three years, <laughs> three years ago? <laughs> the last one. There's going to be another one. What, what happened on the latest? Cataclysm? The latest cataclysm. <laughs> the latest cataclysm. So latest three years ago. Like yeah, three yeah, years ago. Previously on. Yeah. Well, Tim, Tim should tell a story because this actually affects his character or affected his character. Okay, the cataclysm itself, well... Just the cataclysm most, itself, not the story, but the cataclysm itself. Um, there used to be a blood-red moon that uh, followed the planet. Yeah. Well, this blood-red moon was, at, I guess, a comet that no one really knew was in synchronous orbit. Maybe we shouldn't go that far deep, but... Um, it fell, it wiped out the capital of Aglador, yeah. which um, I am from, and it pretty much destroyed the city. And then a whole bunch of other crazy stuff happened, like uh, Vernia right next door. There, the you know they uh, the White Wolf attacked. Um, driving Warren down out of his home. Driving Warren out of his home, <laughs> yeah. and that's why Warren's here. And then in Durindal, like uh, the Baroness was, there was an attempted assassination on her, which is why some there's so many of these bell guards, which is these kind of up junk people who have been brought up uh, from all walks of life uh, to high status within her court um, because they all help save her. Who's the chief among the bell guards that you know? Uh, we know... Uh, Hexenstern? Hexenstern. We have, an- we have another one, too. Who is the... Amadeus. 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 Those are our two contacts. And then there was the captain of the guard, dude, as well, right? But he's not a bell guard, was he? Yeah, he was. Mm-hmm. Was he a bell guard too? He Dang, was. man, bell guarding it all around. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, what's his name that <laughs> Terwin did not like? Sir, that hated us. 
Oh, so this, that's right. So this leads to really strange. <laughs> so from from, from from so Nick, what happens like on the night of Penumbra, the night where you join Amadeus to Amadeus. light um, Amadeus, light the gas lamps of the the city? So as you said, we get, we were hired to light the gas lamps of the city because they had some inkling that some weird shit was going to happen, and it did. Um, we had we had a run in with. Uh, we were like trying to search for a light that did get lit. Right, but I think before that though, there was some concern. Well, broad strokes, okay. very high level. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so there was some whisperings in the sky from a lot of people from the Leviathan, Leviathan's eye. Um, so that caused a lot of concern with people. Is that what you're referring to? No, I was worrying about weights on bridges. That's all. Oh. <laughs> Lovelock Bridge. Yeah, Lovelock Bridge. Um, and then we we were uh, we had a run in with some like uh, slavers. Slavers, yeah. yeah. Well, I can't remember the what were the what, vipers, the dirty vipers, the something uh, vipers. People that should be dead. <laughs> no, um, yeah, they, I think snakes. they were the vipers. Yeah, something um, vipers. Red vipers. Red was it? Red vipers. Okay. Yeah. All I could think of was uh, the purple cobras. Yeah, and we found out that they were slavers later mm -hmm. because we were, they were originally taking out um, a dead bodies. Mm -hmm. well, we um, thought we were dead bodies. Yeah, so yes, we we so dead. that ends in a fiery mess on the Bastards River yeah, toward the end of that end of that act, where Fire Harper and rivers. his storm horse kind of courageously leap. From the docks, <laughs> running onto the, the ship, and the ship proceeds to catch fire, and then it cra catch crashes fire. into a watering hole. It like almost, a wine almost, almost we didn't right. Yeah. So that ends. So what happens after that? Like there's some, there's a, there's unrest in Dorindal at this point. Right. Week. So there's the thirteen, and so there's the, it's a group of. People led by the <coughs> soup colloquial soup-stained prophet at the soup-stained. Soup stained. Definitely yeah. changing in the book. <laughs> He's stained in soup. <laughs> hashtag team soup-stained. Yeah, hashtag team soup-stained. <laughs> came up earlier this week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so uh, he is an advocate for workers' rights, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, as he was a victim of a industrial... Accident. Can we call it that? Where did it happen now? Uh, Coleman and Sox, or what is it? Zox is right. Zox is right. <laughs> Gelbin and Zox. There we go. Col foundry. Coleman. Coleman is. We're, we're not camping here. Uh, <laughs> Gelbin and Zox foundry. That's right. Yeah. So what? what so what? Camping what is the Zox. event that you know? What's the story? What happened there? Like what? So what? an airship crashed into it, <laughs> causing an explosion, and he survived and gained powers. But you also forgot about the reek. <coughs> well, there was the reek, yes. The reek was going on, which is what drove us to, to find the, the 13. Right, so the, the reek happens. We're trying to figure out the source of it and see if we can end it, as Hexen, Hexenstern had hired us for that purpose. Uh, we talked to some shit dealers. Um, what are they called? Gun farmers. <laughs> yeah. uh, night soil. Night, night soil, soil collective. collective. That's, right. Okay. That's right. Sorry. So talk to these Night Soul That's right, guys. A very powerful guild who deals in shit. Why Why is Night Soul Collective so important in Durendal? Because they're, they're info powder. brokers. Basically. What's that? They're info brokers, basically. Yeah, well, what, from, what do you know about it? Uh, so okay. they, can, uh, they use the Night Soil to create gunpowder. Do they create it? Well, Night Soil is used to create gunpowder, I should say. Who do they sell it to? Salt people. Salt people. Yeah. Who create gunpowder out of it. That's right. Thus, Durendal's seat of power is uh who are the That's right. It's situated around the fact that they are the only city in Aglador to produce gunpowder. It's because the saltpeter and the sulfur and That's right. the, the shite is all That's right. located. That's right. <laughs> so this leads to a series of events which culminates in you going to the thirteen and what happens from your perspective, Kay. 
Um, so we saw them like serving a bunch of people and looking like some kind of charity organization, but then we actually saw the prophet. And uh, the prophet, like all of them were talking about how he was reborn and all these things, and he had this flaming wooden sword that had a bunch of runes on it that we found. And then he decided that he was leading them against the Salt Peterman, and we just happened to be in the area, unfortunately, <clears throat> when that was taking place because we had followed one of their flyers. So we ended up going with them towards the Salt Peterman compound. Yeah, we did. This yeah. is when it was established that you're the good guys, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, we were taking advantage of a situation to get the task done. That's right. I never attacked anybody. I just stole We didn't shit. hurt anyone, did we? Yeah. Yeah, and so there's... Did anyone die? Yeah. They, yeah, yeah. Quite. Several So people we were going to the compound because they were trying to save their <laughs> members who had been captured by the Salt Peterman. That's right. Uh, and so we found those people and may have set fire to the compound a little bit. Um, you know, and, and then it happened to be that, like, the guards showed up, but we were gone by that time, so that was pretty <laughs> good. Never actually happened. So, so, we there. so the story goes on about the reek, and that leads to the evening that Harper was kidnapped. Yeah, because I got super drunk the night before and uh, chased a chicken. Uh, the rooster. Yeah, chased a rooster. Uh, I actually up. had that written uh, in my book, by the way. Yeah, no, it was fantastic. Yeah. So I go to sleep it off, basically back at the, uh, the good old tavern that we're staying at. Yeah, I get kidnapped in my sleep. They throw me on top of Matthew. And as they're walking away, uh, I believe it was Terwin and Elisa that stumbled upon them. That's right. That ends up in like a vicious fight in the middle of the streets yeah. at that point. I think, I think uh, Harper regained consciousness, uh, blindly trampled some people. Sorry. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and then found his way to the orphanage. Orphanage, yes. That's right. Because that, cause that, if you recall, that's the point where the um, the local the local sheriff actually, who according to the captain, you know, one of the bell guards, so he's just trying to take care of the people. He they lock down the district like no weapons allowed, and you guys decide to flee to the lower ward at that point to right. take to take. Shelter. He with recommended the we go there. That's actually, right. Yeah. Because you're trying to get so much heat. And there's yeah, really yeah. unclear. There's uncertain alliances. There's uncertain who's on the right side, who's on the wrong side. You kind of happen into like the situation, and in some ways, became almost like the uh, the the thatch. The match was lit, and you just happen to kind of throw the uh, thatch on it, and it begin to burn, kindle very quickly. Mm-hmm. And a lot of things happen at that point, which eventually leads you to what. The Reek. Well, the island. The also, island. during that time, that Warren happened to find a corpse floating in a bathtub. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ooh. We were investigating Mr. Uh, Mr. Tallow's <laughs> candle shop, and Warren broke in while uh, Banneker was was the lookout, and then disappeared and had a wild and crazy night. And then when he came back, he was possessed. That yeah. was where he where he. Gained his and mechanically he gained his disorder. Mm-hmm. What is it? What is it? Disorder called something passionate? Possessed. Or is it just possessed? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I what, have a disorder. What is Warren here at certain times during the story? Uh, his name? The black goat sleeps at night. <laughs> Black. So this leads to the reek at some point. What happens? Uh, we we were following a lead because um, we heard that there was some sort of cloak or cloak. No, we heard about Jonah the Smuggler, and then we talked to Jonah the Smuggler, who was talking about a cloak and a clasp. No. The Da Vinci had done something we right. found out on the island. Yeah, so Jonah <coughs> talked about the island. We went to the island, and we saw the cloak and the clasp there. And on I the died. island. What happened and on the island? Elisa died. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Shadow creatures attacked us. A bunch uh, of birds with human faces attacked us, and Warren got taken up in the sky. <laughs> yeah. I saw, saw Mahal from uh, the Leviathan. What we would understand as space? 
but <laughs> you know uh, what the what the world what the world would not understand. Because um, he's a rocket man. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, yeah, then uh, we came back with the cloak and clasp after uh, um, you know a, a, a well spent fate point and. Uh, I found out that it was the it was a college of a, it's Academy LaVinci LaVinci Academy and um, a Lorenite Academy in Durindal mm-hmm. what a small place the <laughs> yeah, yeah I trust it had been people. closed out yeah uh, parts of it had been closed out completely trustworthy people um, <laughs> super honest yep and uh Long and short of it, we went to investigate. We found um, the the leader of the chapter house. Um, Anybody remember his name? I've got it written down. Headmaster Felix Hofstad. Yeah, Hofstad. Um, Headmaster Splat. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Yes. Uh, what do you find in the LaVinci chapter house? Specifically, I think that Kay, you were the one who were poking was poking around. You saw several things. Yeah, uh, I found a couple. Towers that ended up somewhat mattering for the <laughs> air, the ships, I guess. And then the other thing that she found was um, an equation that had to do with how the airships actually worked. Um, and then there was also like some mechanical objects that were in Hofstede's office that were along the lines of that as well, and there was a machine in it that found the final equation or something like that. The difference machine. The difference machine, that's what it was. <laughs> that we ended up giving to Hexenstern once uh, Hoff said uh, no longer needed it. Yeah, he <laughs> had it out. Yeah, he kind of, Harper did a really good job of convincing him he should just kill himself, because why? What did, what did Hofstorff and the Lorenites do? Because he had killed all of his students by leaving them on this research journey. Yeah. Because of Abel, who we never found. Right, so he, yeah, because he builds the the ship, that fails, and then I think he does the the ritual on the island, and that fails as well. Basically so killed everybody. got like a bunch repeatedly. of people killed. Yeah. So, did we ever think that, <clears throat> I thought the thought was, I'm going way out, probably a little deeper, I thought the thought was that Abel was in his head. We weren't sure. Okay, okay. Yeah. Because the guy that I met that thought I was a student that I talked with in the garden said there was an Abel. Oh, that's Remember, right. Remember, the I guy from the 13 that. actually yeah. stated there was an Abel. So there was someone physical, we assume. So it was probably... But him saying he heard Abel in his head could have been. Right. It's probably the Abel we already know. So, so this goes down, and then... You report back to Hexenstern. Hexenstern takes the difference engine, and then he finally makes the introduction to the Baroness yes. for all of you. What happens in that? In that? In the oh, court? It was a fantastic yeah. scene. Yeah. Everything went we, swimmingly. We uh, all nothing pledged, <laughs> Yeah, we all pledged our loyalty to her. We did. Yes, all of us. It was agreed upon beforehand. Fell in love with her. <laughs> or just Mike. Or you just know, or. or yeah. Mike thought she was hot and then gave her the world. That's This is why Harper does not participate in social <laughs> encounters anymore. So what happens in, in the Baroness's court? She gives him the look. <laughs> well, yes, but... Yeah. No. Yeah, uh, she, she wants us to go and uh, go to Kaltirian. She wants us to take her barrister, Rosalia Mansfield. To and that was it. You don't add anything else, mm-hmm. because all that other shit gets added later. Right, right, right. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> I, escort I, I, her. Uh, uh, to escort her to Kaltirian uh, to, to 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 sign a deal with uh, the would-be, would-be baron. baron. The would-be baron. Uh, what's the his Red name? Knights. Arke. Arke. Yes. Clayton Arke. Mm-hmm. Red Knights. Okay, I was about to say Grandson. Stan. Clayton Arke. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, so we we try and verify with Steeds Hill whether or not we should really be um, signing this deal because essentially it was her intent to secede. Well, before we getting revolution. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you don't have to sugarcoat it. Uh, so it the uh, 
So she she informs us, and then she gives the look to uh, um, Harper. Harper as she's getting a selfie at the same time. Um, because How's she getting a selfie? There's an artist with, I forget their first name, but the last name is Selfie. Um, and mirrors. putting mirrors all up and uh, around that that uh, you can see every angle of her. Well, I made my save, and she is not attractive. Yes. Uh, well, uh, I mean, hey, there's more to it than looks. All right, but the cover the cover of Queen of Embers, by the way, has to be that scene of all the mirrors <clears throat> and all the mirrors should reflect all the the non-player characters you bring into. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Alan Selfie, by the way, I did. Yeah, Alan Selfie. Alan Selfie. Yeah. So then, uh, uh, she gives Harper the look, and he critically fails. Yeah, I critically failed that result. So you get you get a drawback called Lost Heart. Yes. And uh, um, being true to form role player, which I think is uh, was a great job. He pledged the loyalty for all of us. (laughs) Said, "We will do this. We will pledge ourselves to you. We will will pledge our lives." (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I think it was called Lives, actually. Yeah, it, was yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. it wasn't just ourselves. It was so you're yeah. ushered out of the, cor- the the throne room, and at that point, Axon Stern's like, time is of essence. You need to get to kill Tyrion, but you have to do it in a certain fashion. So what does he say? They're going to do the... T- it's basically, they're going to do um, a feint. They're going to have soldiers go one way, and we're going to go another way, um, so that we can try and keep Rosalia and the contract. Yeah. And we were going to take the business at, right. at hand. Yep. Secret. A, born, a, <clears throat> born atop a gift. Well, no, the gift was the, gift was the next day, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. We still hadn't heard about the gift until the next day. Yeah. So we, we tried to verify with Steve Hill, and uh, fate was just against us. Everything <laughs> oh, we tried yeah. just yeah. could not pan out. We, uh... It's just because Rod strokes. Yeah. Remember, yeah. Mike was just rolling, rolling wonderful that night. Yeah, two no. critical failures in a night. Yeah. So, so we couldn't confirm, so we just did it. Yep. And then uh, we we get onto the boat. Uh, we see we see the the boat. That's what we could understand it as, but it's an airship. Uh, and uh, we take off towards uh, Hastings. Hastings. Yeah, yes. born, so born atop the Madelines drawn by 40 oxen yeah. up on wagon wheels is being borne across land through the mountains. Uh, <clears throat> on the way there, we're, we get better acquainted with some of the crew. Um, <laughs> we, we uh, you know, it, it was actually a pretty quick journey there as far as, like, story-wise goes, d- despite days. And then when we get to the... Uh, Village of Hastings? Would you say vi- village? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, there's it's a little bit of knocked down the <clears throat> There's a little bit of trouble afoot. Um, we have some uh, uh, a, a really excellent meeting with the uh, uh, leadership there, who is also not only the the political leader but also the religious leader. Father Proctor. Yeah. Father Proctor Victor. Right, that's yeah, Father Proctor. Proctor. Roland. Roland. Yeah. That's right, um, Father Proctor Roland. And, like, just his relationship with throw, Terran throw in particular in is just fantastic. Uh, because he opened a letter from Steed's Hill that was supposed to be for Terran. And uh, the, the letter said, see to his secession. The uh, guy later revealed that he was a trustworthy Alorite. <laughs> <laughs> and that's an uh, oxymoron. Wanted to know the results of our meeting when we come back through. And uh, we also so fought some. But he gave us information there. for said. Yeah. yeah, he did. He did give us some information. <clears throat> he said that we needed to watch ourselves because there's an assass- There will be assassination attempt on the would-be Baron. Mm-hmm. Well, we yes. didn't learn. We learned that from Rosalia later. But he he oh he. he uh, no, he told us about like pro- the uh, merchant's guild and such. Oh, the guiding hand. The yeah. guiding hand. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he he told us about that. Okay, the so um nice. the assassin attempt. Yeah, was Rosalia later. Okay, so you you oh, find yes, out that pull in, basically. that's right. The stead walls essentially the clans that are there are sundered with the death of Lord Randall Long. This leads to a pretty hectic fight in Hastings where you fire the Madeline's puckle gun and 
proceed to There's destroy. A clan, I believe. Yes. A rebel clan, rather. It's okay. right. Proceed to destroy some farm buildings. You ward them away. The whole thing is shambling. They set those farm buildings on fire. They did. Yeah. Threatening to fall apart. Uh, and eventually, you leave. You leave Hastings. You go through the stead wall. Late. <clears throat> Very late. late. Very late. For a very right. important date. Yeah, so the we ha- if we had to uh, we had to take the most dangerous route, uh, which was through the Stedwall Mountains, a river. And we were like Gandalf. The yeah. path we didn't want to take was yeah. the one we had to take. <laughs> oh yeah, through the Blackfire Pass. And don't go around <laughs> the mountains, go through them. <laughs> so, no. The eagles. Just use the eagles. Yeah. Um, <laughs> fuck the eagles. <laughs> I hate the eagles, man. I do Get out of my cap. Get out of my cap. Anyways, uh, we... Uh, I don't know. Uh, fought a bunch of giants. Nick, take over. We fought a bunch of giants. And people <laughs> nearly died. We made our way to... Everyone nearly died. <laughs> Yeah, Harper was all right. <laughs> okay. Jonathan yeah, they, was okay. They're chasing after you, in fact. Yeah, um, we made our way down the river, and we finally made it to um, Kaltirian. Kaltirian. Yeah. So you get to Kaltirian, and you know you're supposed to deliver Rosalia Mansfield to <clears throat> the would-be Baron, and it turns out that the would-be Baron, because it is winter solstice coming up. No more than just a few days, because you were very, very late for an important date. Um, that Baron is throwing a party. A winter solstice party where this deal between Rosalia Mansfield and him is supposed to be struck. What is his name? Lord Clayton Arcade of the Lesser, okay, that's right. Yeah. So this turns into a kind of who who done it. Because there's a lot of attendees. Is anyone? Maybe we can go through who will do. Who will do? Who will do what? What happens at the party? Warren was excluded. <laughs> the party was pretty straightforward, actually. Warren was looking for another party. Yeah. yeah Warren was kicked out of the party. Yeah. We're not going to go down that path. <laughs> uh, yeah, there was a list of people that were going to be there. Is this one of them fuck parties? <laughs> <laughs> he critically <laughs> fails his test. This one of them fuck parties. Well, the best part about it is. Nick went with it too. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because Jonathan, so Jonathan had because Jonathan was trying to think around like how can we potentially change the game because we don't know enough yeah. about the attendees. Right. Let's let's bring the battle line down river because it's supposed to be a gift for Lord Clayton Arcade from the Baroness to him. Yes. Uh, so that way we could cause some unrest in the plans of the assassins that hopefully they would reveal themselves. However, um, the list, uh, in hindsight, the uh, list turned out to be basically some red herrings, like uh, where we were focused on the attendees themselves, that Jonathan eventually started to figure it out, it was like, wait, and he was about ready to go and uh, check on Rosalia Mansfield, who excused herself to uh, uh, drop the documents that she was supposed to. No, because she got a letter from the messenger. And but, she needed to do that, too. She, ah, Possibly, okay. but she did get ah. a letter from a messenger as well. Yeah. And that's when she slipped away. I must have missed that at the time. <coughs> I, didn't, I didn't know that or remember that. So. Notes! Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, why don't you take over? Uh, uh, sure. So, we're at the party. We had picked three people, and we followed them all night, not thinking much about it. But Jonathan... Was supposed to do the ship, uh, but Warren went ahead and took over because uh, they didn't want him at the party. Right. So he um, might have gotten drunk with some of the sailors and not quite moved the ship for a bit. But he did end up moving I the did ship. It so eventually, you know, yeah. I got the job done. Yeah. It worked. Um, Wait, what do you do with a drunk? He's very successful. But uh, right what now. do you do with a drunk? <laughs> so it does, nope. <laughs> it does appear there actually was an assassin that was going after the Baron, or at least somebody who was going to screw with him, which was. Um, what was his name? Uh, Hefner. Insert. Yeah, yeah I was gonna Hefner. say insert porn dealer. Um, <laughs> he, he, the wood he, carvings. He deals yes. with pornographic wood carvings yes. of the Baroness and right. others. <clears throat> yeah, and so uh, they, when we figured out what was going on and like a commotion started to happen, everybody was, everybody of importance was moved down to the porn cellar, and uh, the rest of us were running around trying to figure out what happened. Jonathan found that. Uh, Unfortunately, Rosalia had already been killed at this point, and so was Tenenfelder, who was the Lieutenant, captain yeah, that yeah. had run 
the distraction uh, group, the secondary group that was supposed to come to Kelterian. But we didn't even um, know they the city. Yeah, we didn't even know they had gotten there, but apparently they had just gotten there. So, found him dead, found Rosalia dead, and then found the tall man with a mask that was running away from the scene. So we tried to chase him down, um, as well as made sure that uh, Flint Hefner and his daughters, which I believe was Delilah and then one of the new guards, um, couldn't do anything to the Baron. Yeah, that was me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I held uh, them while you guys did the other part. Yeah, yeah. so uh, I believe, yeah, Harper and Terwin yeah, took off did. after the masked man. Yeah, we did. Um, because Jonathan and Elisa really aren't much for combat, so we just kind of pointed out where he was. And then finally they chased him through a greenhouse and then back out again, and Jonathan and Elisa hit him with a pot and killed him. Um, yeah, you you know. stunned him. And then <laughs> Terwin. Oh, that's true. Terwin and Terwin set him on fire. <laughs> I suppose that would be the thing that killed yeah, me. I got so, to call so. up a dooming, too, at that. Yeah. 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 So, he, so. so the assassin of Rosalie Mansfield is burnt up. He's clearly Siobhan. Yes. You're like, this man's a monster. Yep. Where did he come from? And they're like, oh, he came in on a ship. You find this out. But before we get to that, you... You what what what's the drive after that? Like what have you discovered after the party? We found a bunch of notes that were partially burnt. Yeah, they were with green, Rosalia. Right? Yeah, um, that mentioned Stowe, uh, Emil Frosch, um, the Esoterica Durindel, and Bruno Lehman or B L, which mm -hmm. we took to mean Bruno Lehman, who was uh, one of the Zox and Guildman people. I guess no, he's from the Merchant Guild, Guiding Hand. So we figured out that we needed to find out what ship he came on, and I don't remember how, but we found out it was one of our friends. Yeah, you, you decided to go after, the first lead you went after was the Esoterica to Rendell. Yes. And that's what brought you to Almeron's Gates, which brought you to the docks at some point, um, because clearly the, you know, the this is when you discovered the Inquisition uh, through Eva Inquisitor Evangeline Falwell, that they're burning all the printed word in Elmiron's Gates, which eventually takes you to where you find out Jenna Sparrow's ship, The Last Wish, is there. And that's where Jason enters. And that's where we kind of, everybody kind of comes together. A, a fraught f battle occurs. And uh, after you manage to dispatch them with some explo explosions, exchange of gunfire, and the smoldering ruin. A few kittens. Uh, yeah, of the, Kev of the Coventry Palanquin wagon. And the the Baroness, the the great gun on the back, um, you take the you take the last wish across the Axwater River, and you discuss, of course, with Eugene uh, he, why he's here. So let's pick up from where J Eugene you join in. What happens? Yeah. So Eugene joins in, and he is there under orders of Hexenstern to assist them in basically ensuring that this uh, the Baroness's plans go accordingly. He's also there to deliver a bit of information, uh, a letter to them in particular, as well as a horse. And so we, we take the boat across the river, um, have a bit of a discussion with a captured priest. Um, well, fanatic, really. Just mild discussion. Uh, things don't go accordingly. Oh, he's a squire. A mild, a mild discussion. Mild discussion. And There's a bit of a ride. disagreement. Yeah. Uh, there was a kerfuffle. And... Uh, it didn't work out, so we had to let him go. Missing eyes. Yeah, uh, we we just didn't see eye to eye. This is really what it yeah. came down to. Yeah, that's a. Yeah. He, um, lacked, he lacked perception. He did. You went a little overboard. He then went he a little, 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 little overboard. Board. Yeah, it, it didn't go well, <laughs> but we decided uh, with the information gained that we were going to uh, head in towards the uh, Lyceum and the library itself to try and recover Jonas Sparrow, um, and and get some more information so we can complete the mission in Amaran's Gate. Um, heading in, we find the, uh, the what is it, auto, automated guillotine, I think? Or is it, is auto guillotine. That? Auto guillotine, I always messed it up. Uh, which was a bit of a distraction where we were trying to slow down and save some people. Um, did manage to pull that off, then head across to the, the cover of the library. Um, and uh, worked our way in, found, ran into, I always butcher names, so I like to handily keep them written down. Um, we run into 
Father Ch Bartlesby. Bartlesby. Father Bartlesby. Uh, as well as um, Sir Guillaume. Um, and Guillaume Genevieve. Guillaume Genevieve the second. Uh, who He's 16. We have a bit Tell of a discussion with like. about what the proceedings are about to go down. Uh, the father convinces us that we do need to assist with the executions that are about to take place. Says he knows of a secret path but lacks the key, which Eugene happens to have on him. And we sneak across into the Lyceum, which is an exciting time uh, of running into um, Inquisitor Evangeline. Uh, she nearly immolates Eugene, uh, but he is found dishonest yet spared, which is the only reason why she continues to talk to him. Uh, we have a bit of a discussion about how she's more or less completed her mission in Almeron's Gate, and these people have suffered enough, and she needs to move on. And we convince her not to kill Booker, uh, who she then binds to Alicia. And, uh, but the, the brother, is a brother and nephew of Father Bartlesby, she does not find our fair game to, to pass up on. So they they get the they get the a little bit taken off the top. Um, we're a little bit insensitive about that. We said one third. Um, we managed to. Two three is not bad. <laughs> one out of three isn't bad. Uh, uh, uh. Oh. <laughs> Until I said for the guy who just lost. Yeah, his which we didn't know the brother and nephew. Yeah, right. and he should have led with that. Exactly. Yeah, a lead lead. With he was on the Loranite. Father Bartlesby was not. Remember. Been he around was simply the taking shelter in the Mine archivist's well. library. <laughs> he, he's a really nice guy, though, as are all Loranites. You guys have had some questionable <laughs> Loranite introductions. The That's why Eugene's here, actually. That's why Dan brought me in. I'm just the redemption right. arc for that whole faction. So we That's actually found out something interesting about the Loranites we skipped over yeah. on your way to Almeron's Gates because you found a because Josephine Booker was able to get you into the, the district. Uh, or show you the way to the district below the earth, which is where a lot of weird stuff happens. But where does it culminate? The uh, tomb of Alorn. Yes. I was going to say the dark yes, thing that killed we, me for the second where time. Where we took the laurel of Alorn. Took the laurel. Yes. 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 Actually totally left it took behind. The I mean, technically you took it. You just didn't take it. Because I had to blow a door open. So, you mm -hmm. know. Which may have shattered his doom. Yeah, no. Yeah. How things go. So the, the founder of the Eloranites from the Second Age, you find him uh, in his tomb, and that kind of goes amiss, and there's all kinds of strange shadows and dreams that takes place in the tombs around it. You murder some tomb robbers. But that brings us forward as we continue on back to Evangeline, back to Eugene Thornberry, the insensitivity thing, and then you're like, okay, what do we do next? And we'll pick up here from Kay's perspective... So all this happens, and you find Edward Booker, and you all get on the ship, and you start to talk. What happens? We we, we get into a discussion about we needed a day. That's yeah. what, well, we had the discussion One short with them day. about about uh, who's still needing to recover book. that book. Who's going to get that? Which I do not have because it's currently in my car. So that's. Oh, it's so you're talking about, yeah, the esoterical Durindal. Yeah. One of us ends up taking it. One of us. One of us. And the, the other two more. have decoys. Cover your ears and we'll reveal you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The two of us have decoys, um, but Edward gave us the real one. Mm -hmm. But I think we still have uh, things we have to do here. You do, but we're not that's there yet. We're okay. just talking the story we, uh, in recap. We're just still doing recap. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, okay, still doing So I'm sorry. you find out what about Edward Booker and Jonas Sparrow. What do you know about their relationship? They've gone way back. They, he deals in items that to Hexenstern. Hexenstern prizes. He's like a black market dealer of questionable, yeah, book he's like yeah. books and heretical. Just call him yeah. heretical. It's easier. He's an antiquarian. If you look at his and revised core rule book, <laughs> <laughs> he's a dealer of uh, occultish antiquities, which includes the es esoteric of Durendal that there clearly. Is. Joe was supposed to bring back to Hexenstern. Right. Right. And instead, it's one of us. You, you actually want to read it. <laughs> I do. I do want to read it. Which some people read some of it, and Harper did not take 
Yeah, what what's the what are the broad strokes that you read and what was bookmarked in the esoteric or the Rendell? You had the favorite. Yeah, idea. and I meant to bring it, but it's currently my car. It's okay. Some history. So let's leave our stuff here from yes. now on. Yeah. Um, so we have it on hand. So. That is a rule. <laughs> That's fine. But, um, uh, broad strokes, though, where you do was... It was about the bitch queen. Yeah. Uh, history yeah. about the bitch queen and her destroying knowledge. Is that really heretical knowledge? Well, but that was... that. We don't know what else is in there. That's what it that was. That was what was bookmarked. Yeah. Is that something like secret that no one knew about from before? Like that's pretty much known knowledge, right? Isn't it? I just well, I think that of... it was partly that like she burnt some stuff and then she basically rewrote parts of the Libra. Right. Yeah. Oh. Well, and then like the Siobhan are the children of. Yeah, it talked about how Leviathan was, I believe, like kind of like a fallen. Demon angel, something, drop something from the outer edges of the uh, darkness, and how uh, she was basically uh, defeated by Basaya and trapped uh, in a star, basically. And so that's that's why they say Leviathan's point out the little Leviathan's eye. And once a year, she has a view of Dorindel, and that was kind of what I think Warren was seeing. When he had his vision, mm. and so, like, but that all had been like swept under the rug. Would you like me to read it? Sure. Does a refresh would that be helpful? Well, yeah, it'd be way, way easier. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's good. That's good. That's good. You actually covered a lot of what happened. So it is the third age of mankind, but the second age of mysteries on tumultuous time in the history of Mahal. Kingdoms rose and fell at the drop of a penny. The Aldish people had only recently arrived from the first shore and settled into a region called Aquitaine by the Dunish. The Aldish consisted of three families, the Eridan and Aglador, the <coughs> Gentish and Galliona, the Rovanians, and the Girdle. The Church of the Covenant and worship of their gods, including the Martyr, Steward, and Learner, were still in its infancy, as Eridan priests had only recently began to proselytize the Dunish tribes. One of the lesser-known incidents from the early Second Age, scrubbed from the Holy Libram during the Great Purge by Queen Lysandra, the Bitch Queen, is a story about one of the Night Father's servants who broke her way into the material rebel Mahal. Records of this event have been eradicated with such fervor that only a few diary entries and elusive pieces of art remain. From these scarce and obscure sources, I've been able to deduce the following. And of course, this is all written in first person in the Esoterica de Rindle, which is clearly a collection of notes, not like a story, but a collection of notes. Can we pause for a minute? Because yes. I, I know people on the uh, Discord are really interested in what's going on in Mahal and some of the geography and stuff. So could you point out some of the stuff on the map that we were referring to? In terms well, of it's kind of hard locations? to see from where we're at, but essentially, if and I'll, I'll put this up, and I'll actually put this on the video. I'll take the map up. So it, the, the first shore is far, far north beyond Gorhoth, and no, yeah. the Aldish came here in the early Second Age because they fled what they call the Forbidden Kingdom, and they were split into three tribes, major tribes at least, up to which it included the Grahlstedters, but that's a different story. And as they kind of came down, this is of course like 1,500 years ago almost uh, at this point, um, they split into three tribes, the Aridane, the Ghent-ish, and the Romanians. And they're all vastly, vastly different. And of course they brought religion, they brought steel, they brought horses, and they basically conquered the north. They became the great conqueror race. They're kind of like the Normans of, uh, of, of our real world, I guess you could say, but very different, of course, in culture. But they brought the religion of the, of the co Church of the Covenant, the worship of the martyr, the steward, and the learner, the, the, the three, the, three the, the god of three faces, if you will. So that's kind of the broad strokes of that, and the world, of course, is called the Hall. So the story in Esoteric of Durindal continues. Almer, the secret of states in his seminal work, Libra Umbra, that angels who serve the Night Father are born as embodiment of a particular emotion. Of course, you know, the Night Father is like a god who kind of exists in the Librum. He's not worshipped, so to speak. He just is kind of like, uh, he's associated now with the birth of children. Um, they, I don't know if you recall, but there's a, way, way back in like episode four or five, there's a story who's called the Purple Prince, and it's a reference to coupling on the night of penumbra as well as um the little stitchings they put inside of diapers for children 
that's how the Night Father is revealed today. He's not this like evilish god that you. He's not death. He's basically. not death exactly. He's just kind of this figure in history. No one really knows much about. But he's called the Night Father, and sometimes he's called the Nine Father. Right. The the translations get a little funky because in ancient all the difference between the the number nine and the word night are very similar. So today it's simply known as the Night Father in the Holy Libra, but some older the older faiths believe him called the Nine Father because he was truly a believed to be a god of birth and death in the same way that the martyr is seen now. Right. So. Um, you know that the angels who serve the Night Father are born as an embodiment of a particular emotion, and one such was a powerful angel whose name was lost to time. Like all the Night Father's servants, though, she was a unique expression of his emotions uh, at the time of her creation, which would have been not here in this world. Her emotion was something quite foreign and loathsome to the Night Father, uh, something a little bit too moral, the, un the emotion of unrequited love, the emotion of unreturned love. And really, despite all of her allure and influence, the angel had never been able to entice the Night Father to, to reciprocate her, his adoration at all. Um, instead, he was, she was seen as an anathema uh, to the Night Father and a reflection of his denial of all things unworthy of love. So imagine, like, from a human perspective, what that means. Uh, she desired nothing more to prove herself worthy to him through complete and utter devotion, but twisted to her own worldview. So what's what the Esoteric and Arendel is saying here is that there are some very human attributes to this angel thing. You're not really sure what it is at this point. It's just a story. Um, and you know that, of course, the Esoteric and Arendel goes on and says the Night Father had a grand plan to spread his influence upon the Hall, but not until the world had grown from his dark ages. Uh, but in the Well of Souls, of course, this woman, this angel grew to be very influential, attracting other angels of the Night Father who suffered from his unrequited love as well. Uh, none of Mahal knew her name because this is during the Dawn Age, so to speak. Um, but um, she intended to ensure that both the Night Father and the people of the Second Age would never forget her name. Uh, ironically, it didn't work. Uh, to earn his love, she intended to gift the Night Father with the most chaste and wholesome of all women from Mahal. You know where this is going. Against his wishes, she descended upon Mahal and brought with her the Siabra, the bastard-born children of the Night Father who wore masks to hide their anguish and fear. And tears, rather. You know that she was defeated and beaten back to the Will of Souls, and the Siabra, of course, escaped to the Four Winds, but the author, who isn't named in this book, doesn't. he says, I'll talk more about it later. Meaning it's probably somewhere deeper inside the Esoteric of Durandal. So disappointed and disgusted that she would seek to infiltrate so, in the hall so early in its infancy, the Night Father plucks her from the Well of Souls and casts her beyond the stars into the Ethereal Veil. And that's where she's imprisoned by a powerful hexagrammatical equation of dark magic and turned into what it's called in the book, a word called Numina, which is an ancient old world word that basically means watcher beyond the stars. Uh, and now within Leviathan's Eye, the Autumn Star burns toward the world during Penumbra in Autumn first day of autumn and then leaves during the last day of umbra in spring the watcher beyond the stars is allowed a glimpse upon dorindle and this is where it gets kind of where it gets a little strange because this is the point where like in in the case of elisa she has to kind of piece some things together because you rem remember in the la vinci chapter house and you didn't quite put it together at the time but there's a half burned painting that basically apparently survived a terrible fire it's half burned um, it pictures a woman with a flowing mane of black hair and burning blue eyes, defeating an angel with a pillar of flame. Even though this full story was lost during the Great Purge, uh, the painting reveals the truth. The angel failed in her efforts uh, and was driven back to the Will of Souls by none other than Basaya, one of the three magi, the first priest of Church of the Covenant, in Sainted and Durindal at Basaya Square. And that is kind of what is kind of the the thing that kind of this this kind of end of the end of that act is what led to is like the, the, the this piece of truth. What it has to do with anything, you're not sure even if it's connected, but clearly it's important to Hexenstern. This book contains something that hex, contains things Hexenstern has a deep interest in. If you remember, Hexenstern had foreseen the assassination attempt upon the Baroness, he, as he said, in the stars. He is he's an astrologer, is what he has said. And a, 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 a literally a middling soothsayer. Like, nobody of any importance until he saved the Baroness's life but with Elevate the Bethlehem of Belgard. So he was nobody before that. So, <clears throat> that's the Esoterica to Rendell, and that kind of brings us to uh, 
the the rest of the story in there. Some things we're going to go through, but we're actually going to go ahead and wind down for just a moment, and we will return back to the game to actually play episode 58. Running our feast. Uh, he's I love the money. Remember when we used to have to buy our own soda and snacks? Like, 